Hey everyone, it's uh, Theric here from Pantheon Plus, and today I wanted to make a video about a game that I've been following for a while that I've made videos about before. Um, it's called Eternal Tombs. It was formerly known as the uh, War of Dragon Rocks, and this is a game that's been in development for a little while. It's a privately funded uh, MMORPG uh, made by somebody who's really cognizant of the old era of, of MMOs and sort of throwback um, ideas and, and getting away from some of the modern mechanics that get a little bit... Uh, um, overused these days. So a different style of MMORPG. And the developer is Triune Studios. And the uh, director of Triune Studios is a fellow named Josh Kaba. Now I've had the opportunity to talk to Josh several times and uh, we did an interview with him on our podcast, The Rewind, which you can find linked here if you're not aware of it. But uh, we asked him all kinds of questions about what this game's about and, and, you know, got into some details that we really wanted to know. The reason I wanted to make this video is because they just released a new uh, reveal trailer uh, when they rebranded from War of Dragon Rocks to Eternal Tombs. And uh, the, um, the trailer is brand new and I thought that there's lots of good stuff in it that I'd like to sort of talk about and react to. So I thought maybe that would be entertaining. So let's take a look at that trailer. Yeah, and there's sort of the first real differentiator of this game is that it's a game that is run by live dungeon masters. So every it's a dynamic warfare MMO is what they're calling it. And the reason it's dynamic is because the dungeon masters, just like a tabletop game, have the ability to change the game as you play through it with your group and, and uh, however you're doing it. Uh, they have the ability to alter the landscape. They'll talk about it in the trailer a little bit here. But this is the, like the, the prime differentiator. So everything else is, is done through that lens. So just keep that in mind. So another thing you'll see here is that um, it's very action oriented. Now it was originally being designed as a tab targeting game, but uh, they changed their combat to make it more interactive, to make it more fun as the developer described it. They, they did a lot of testing with it and they found that it just wasn't uh, meeting their standards for what they wanted. Um, so it's it's changed from a, from a tab target um, more approach with uh, again, old school in mind um, to a more action oriented uh, approach. And uh, yeah, you can see it in these in this trailer that um, it runs. I mean, the trailers are not always representative of the gameplay and you know when it how it runs and what it looks like in game, but um, you can see that it's it's fairly fast paced at this point. And um, yeah, let's keep watching. I mean, certainly no shortage of big set pieces, right? Like lots of stuff um, that really evokes feeling of epic battles and, and big dangerous monsters. Um, I did a video, but the last video I did on this game, um, they have it pegged at 76% complete at this point in terms of everything needing to be done to get to launch. So what you're seeing is a, a game that's at, at last update, which was I think a couple months ago, 76% uh, complete. So keep that in mind because a lot of times we hear, you know, it's just a trailer. They're just showing a. It's it's a, It's not the actual game. It's not. It's a developer environment. That kind of thing. So, I think what we're seeing is probably more indicative of what the gameplay is going to look like and what it's going to uh, feel like when it gets to launch. So. Welcome to Mithir, the land of eternal tombs. Eternal Tombs is an action combat MMORPG with a world run by live dungeon masters who help shape and guide your journey every time you log in. The role of the dungeon master is to provide a constant stream of events and changes within the world. To 
Okay, sorry, I got to pause it here because if you've played EverQuest, you know what this scene reminds you of. And Josh is a definitely an EverQuest fan. I know he uh, he spent a lot of time in EverQuest, as did I. And uh, when we talked, I think the the, the specters of uh, South or South Row, North Row, and EverQuest came up in our conversation actually. And uh, so this scene just is 100% is those specters by the tower in the desert. I, I really like the homage to EverQuest. Make the game feel immersive, dynamic, and exciting. Whether it is two trolls that have come down from the mountains to wreak havoc in the plains of Aru, or a volcanic explosion ravaging lands in the east, dungeon masters are here to build out and trigger dynamic events. Nice, uh, nice tower in the background there. Again, another clear homage to uh you know another well-known fantasy universe <laughs> so but there's nothing wrong with that you know like these games are built on the you know standing on the shoulders of giants and that's okay so don't be afraid to uh to show what you love and and make it your own for those who adventure throughout Mithir, dungeon masters are staff members with the power to help you experience something unique every time you play that point's really important that he said that the dungeon masters are staff members because there are questions I've heard is like, you know, who who is going to play their dungeon master? And if it's just your friends, if it's just people that you're, you know, friendly with or whatever, they can, I mean, an MMO is about progression and a lot of people are very uh, focused on progression, rightly so. And, you know, it's it's a contest. It's a, it's a competition to get as far as you can to progress your character as far as you can before anybody else does. So there's always that worry of, you know, oh, they're gonna they're gonna give them unfair, you know, advantages, they're gonna give them better loot. But this is run by staff members, the DMs. So I think that that bears pointing out because it's one of the more common criticisms I've heard, or questions, I should say. They change the environment, open secret portals to unexplored areas, spawn treasure or traps, create dynamic quests, and much more. They have limitless power to shape the story and reward you as you dive into the world. In addition to... Good to see uh, swimming in the game. <laughs> always a uh, always a question. I think it's like 50-50 whether a new MO has swimming actually in it and activated. So uh, yeah, it's good to see some underwater combat. I mean, they're showing lots of different environments too. I think it's really important to get a sense that the world is varied. And, um, you know, one of the things I've talked about um, that's important to me as a MMO player is the, the sense of an open world. And that's one of the questions I had, I would have for Josh, if I were to talk to him again, would be, you know, it's a dynamic warfare MMORPG as described and how open is the world or is it more, you know, is it more, uh, mission based? Is it more, uh, contained to a limited area where your, your campaign is taking place at the DM setting before you, or are you free to just basically roam the world and do what you like? And the DM will sort of follow along your path. So that would be something that I would want to know more about. The dynamic adventuring, dungeon masters have the opportunity to fire up war operations. War operations are a call to all adventurers to carry out attacks on enemy strongholds. As you carry out an operation, your group will face waves of attacking troops and you'll be asked to survive while trying to discover hidden secrets and mysteries to help you gain further access. That's pretty great there. So what he did was he fired his arrow, hit the hit the uh, gearbox or the, the pulley mechanism to open the gate. And uh, that's one of those things that if you looked at the last update on the website, they talked about with these war operations missions. And it sort of answers my previous question a little bit because these are clearly separate from the open world aspect of it. They the trailer says, you know, the DM can spawn a war operation. And so that, you know, that speaks to, says to me, it's more of a contained mission, whereas the, the complementary piece is the open world. But how will the DM function in the open world is, is the question I would, I would have. So, but again, going back to the update, it talks about each uh, war operation having really unique puzzles and things that are going to take time for your groups to figure out. Of course, you know, it'll be solved in a matter of you know whatever days and then it'll be up online and you can look it up but if you're not into doing that uh, you certainly have the opportunity to spend the time with your group figuring it out without looking it up if that's what you enjoy into the strongholds succeeding in taking out enemy strongholds will result in great rewards 
eternal tombs has a vast amount of secrets and facets to explore. We look forward to sharing more with you in the coming months. Wishlist Eternal Tombs on Steam, subscribe on YouTube, or sign up for the beta on our website to stay up to date on all of the latest news and information. I just want to go back for one second there. It's something I wanted to comment on there. Um, so video series begins part one story, September 7th, 2023. So if you know anything about me, this is kind of what I'm into. I'm into the lore of, of the uh, games that I play a lot. And um, the War of Dragon Rocks had, a, you know, a, a fair amount of backstory, but um, it was still not fully fleshed out, I don't think. So I, it sounds like they're going to start going into that a little more. So definitely be um, subscribed here, I think, to this to their channel on YouTube if you aren't. To, uh, to see what that's all about. But just going back to the overall trailer, I think this does a good job of explaining the game. I think it does a good job of demonstrating the visual aspects of it. Uh, the audio in the beginning is a little loud. I don't know if it's just me, but it seemed a little bit clippy to me, but uh, you know, that's just a minor gripe with the trailer itself, talking more about the game. Um, I have a lot of faith in this game and um, having spoken with Josh, I can attest that he's a very down to earth guy. Seems like he knows what he's talking about. Um, seems genuine in just wanting to make a great game again. And there's no crowdfunding or anything going on here. You don't have to do anything other than just be interested in it, follow it. So I'm going to keep following it. I'm going to keep making content about this game. And they also have testing coming up. I know that there's um, opportunities on their website for beta signups. So if you want to do that, you can go check that out. Uh, and as uh, I'm definitely interested with Pantheon Plus, we have a group of folks that we stream with on a regular play, on a regular basis, playing group centric MMOs. And this is going to be right up our alley. So this is high on our wish list of, uh, hey, let us in and try it out for you and, and help you test it and maybe make some more content about it. So looking forward to doing that if that ever becomes a reality. But anyway, hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.